everyone, welcome back to the first 2024 unboxing video of the Genesis Cloud Features. I'm Edgar Quadra on the video today. Uh, again, Alexander and Ryan. Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. Good Hello. Again. Great, all right, so we'll get right into it. So the very first one comes from the January 10th re week release, improved agent <coughs> to agent transfer. Um, so this is a, a really big UI change for agents when it comes to uh, digital um, interactions. So on the screen here I have is um, a, a chat initiated and whenever I need to or an agent needs to transfer this particular chat to uh, an agent or to a queue, I'm just going to choose Ryan right now as my example here. So he's available. And what's going to happen is uh, previously this transfer window didn't appear. The transfer would just go straight to that user or straight to the queue um, without any um, feedback to the initiating agent that's doing the transfer. So now what you see here is the transfer window stays on and I get a cancel button, which is kind of cool. So right now Ryan accepted it, but I could have canceled it and then um, being able to take it back and then try someone else or try a queue. So that's a brand new feature um, that's available there. I think uh, very handy um, and for uh, workflow when it comes to agent digital transfers. Okay. Um, next one here, um, Alexander, this is your wheelhouse. Uh, change daily values and distribution forecast modification type. Go ahead, lay down. Yeah. So basically what changed is uh, that an old functionality just got a new um, just got a new dimension, if you will. So um, the process uh, previously was to, well, if you need to modify a day or a week, um, what you would do is you would bump up the numbers either by a fixed value or by a percentage. And you can see kind of, kind of literally all of the numbers going up, right? Uh, the, um, with this specific release, you don't only get the possibility to do that, but you can also decide how the underlying kind of, kind of intervals, either days or or weeks or even half hour hourly intervals, uh, are are weighted, uh, and how that distribution is going to look like. So you can actually skew the numbers to be kind of, kind of higher uh, towards um, the start of the day or the uh, or the end of the day, really, uh, or towards the middle of the day, right? If you if you want to make a nice um, smooth looking bell curve, for example. Um, on, I would like to show that because it is a great addition to the WFM system. Mm -hmm. Right. So in here, we already have a create forecast and we're looking at kind of, kind of the long term um, view. Let me just go back to to the more kind of granular type of view. I'm just going to expand on my modifications tab and um, I just want to talk um, to do to kind of walk through how it was done previously. So what I would do is I would go here and I would, for example, uh, kind of kind of kind of change um, percent per interval per plan group and bump this up by let's say 100% because we're expecting double the the the, the call volumes. And if I just remove the HT, we can see what my what my volumes would be, right? Uh, the addition to this currently is we. First of all, get a, get a completely new type of a new type of modification, and if I expand on this, I can select um, any of these days uh, or uh, yeah, any of these days basically, and uh, I can actually adjust the the weights of these intervals uh, for the modification that I'm applying. And to take it to dial it back a bit, if I would kind of kind of modify this whole day to offer double the amount of calls, my distribution would pretty much stay the same uh, throughout the day. So we're still talking about the same uh, weights that these individual intervals would have for this day. But if I would say that in this interval, we would have probably 80% of all of the calls for that day. For example, I can say, okay, for this specific interval, I'm expecting probably around 800 calls. You can see how this changes um, kind of the weights of all of these of all of these um, intervals. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh, so and then 
this is not, not as good of an example. Uh, I would say that I'm still to play with this and understand and to get into the nitty gritty of it. But basically, um, what this gives the forecaster is the capability to really shape how the days and weeks and months are going to look like, not only for not only for kind of short term focus, but also for long term focus, for, where we are looking at kind of long term capacity planning as well. Um, and yeah, this was something that was definitely missing, and it's here now. Awesome. Great. Thanks for that explanation. Okay, so let's move on now. Um, so that was a great explanation of this new feature, Alexander. Uh, next one here is suppress recording when a call is on hold. Um, which I think is is maybe an underrated feature um, in that, you know, when the call is on hold, uh, why is that taking up airspace in the call recordings, right? So a couple of uh, Genesis uh, reasons for that is, you know, alleviate some of the data storage. And, um, and when it comes also to uh, the, sorry, uh, when it comes to the quality assurance, right? As a quality assurance, uh, manager or, or, or you know member of that particular team you know if a call does go on hold then i have to kind of figure out in the timeline how long that hold is and everything so i think um you know sorely sorely needed feature um anything you guys want to add to that uh, particular feature guys no i think that this is simply not going to to kind of uh, saturate the supervisors uh, basically when they're listening to the calls as well as uh, saving as well as saving some some data storage uh, for mm -hmm. for the org as a whole definitely yeah yeah definitely uh, an efficiency improvement i believe in, in a lot of different aspects yeah okay. well, and that that's a really yeah. good call out just the the amount of time saved like if you're going through a recording for training purposes for reporting for uh, QA, like that's a huge time save to not have to essentially listen to dead air. Uh, like that, that's fantastic. Yep. Yep. Great. Thanks um, for that. Okay. Uh, next one here. I know, Ryan, you called this out here. Architect flow insights toggle for bot and digital bot flows. Um, so flow authors can now. Um, add flow insights toggle um, for when an action gets executed by the bot. Um, can you explain that a little bit more for us? Yeah. Uh, so what's been added, let me, uh, actually you can see it right there. So they've added in the, the this toggle option up at the top right of your screen in Architect where you can toggle on the flow insights, and that's going to actually give you a visual, uh, visual insight into seeing what part of the bot is going to be used most often, uh, and not what is going to be, but what has been used. So this is going to be really useful when you're looking to oh. optimize, and you're looking to really just figure out what what is your bot actually accomplishing, what uh -huh. are pieces of it that maybe you don't need anymore. Uh, or perhaps if you find that people are getting stuck in certain loops, great. Like you can see that and now you can help uh -huh. figure out alternate pathways. And this right, is something right. where in, in obviously in a flow like this, it's pretty simplistic. You can see it's, you're really only using two of those options, but once you huh. start getting into flows and bots that get much more complex the usage of this and how useful it is is just going to grow in scale right right so in this particular example here i'm going to assume the dark bl uh, uh, blue means you know it's a digital menu right so it's always being triggered so it's yeah. the most common used in this particular example and then the lighter blue ones or different shades kind of will show um their usage rate cool yeah exactly cool uh yeah couple more examples in here yeah and it looks like you can also hover over it and it'll give you how often yeah yeah see different shades there as well yeah i mean being able to work inside the architect switch that flow and then modify it on the fly uh, that's pretty cool i really yeah pretty awesome 
Now, one thing just mm-hmm. as a call out for that is just uh, as a heads up, it will only work for the current published version. So if you're mm. trying to look at uh, a version that you're in the process of editing, Mm-mm. you won't be able to see that because you're now working on a working copy that has no data associated with it. So you can only view this for the working version of that flow. So if I wanted to do some A-B testing, I would have to create two copies of this flow. Right, and uh, then publish A, and then publish B. Did we kind of mm-hmm. get this view? Am I on the right track there? I believe so. It, it, in essence, you can only have you can only see the insights of whatever is currently live the in the system. current version, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, if some of our clients use the version in for the A/B tested, um, they would have to change their process to actually have two different flows, copies of each other, mm-hmm. and then publish one flow over the other for A/B test instead of relying yeah. version mm-hmm. in to do the A/B testing. Yes, and maybe yeah. using maybe using a third flow that would. I'm going to take 50% of users and send them to one, 50% to the other, so that they actually get live interactions the whole time for both of them. Right. Yeah. 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 That yeah. That, that is something that would have to change. Excellent. All right. Great insight, guys. Right. Very, uh, sleek, last... very sleek feature. It is, right? Yeah. Incredibly sleek. I'm liking, you know, as Genesis starts building its AI practice, these little little hints of um thoughtfulness in mm-hmm. being able to design these these bot flows um could go a, will go a long way okay now the last uh, feature for this month is support for multiple external email participants um so if i can recall correctly previously if i were to add another uh, as an agent if i were to add another um email address here to the two um there would be there would be a record of it in the timeline and in the transcript of reviewing it, but uh, there would be no record of it as an external participant. So what do I mean by that? If I'm going to do that as an example, and I'm going to do uh, Ryan here, um, actually do Alexander, and I send this previously um, that new participant wouldn't show up as an external participant. Uh, I'm using that a lot. Sorry, everyone on the video. Um, I'm going to hit send. And now if I go into my interactions view and I already have this uh, email pre-filtered. What's new with this feature here is under external email addresses, um, the participants would show up, uh, would not show up in here, but now they have. So previously I added uh, Ryan's email address, it would show up there. Um, also in the timeline, um, that participant shows up here as well. So um, as, as in the timeline, those that uh, Ryan's email address in there too. Um, again, nature of the demo, it looks like um, Alexander hasn't shown up there for some reason. Maybe do a quick re- little refresh mm-hmm. there. Thing that um, I have to respond in order. Oh, you have to order, respond for, okay. for my piece. Too. So, so, so this, this is kind of, kind of like uh, having a timeline of the whole thread and of all of the participants, basically. Yeah. Which is yep. visually, well, I imagine for kind of emails with up to twenty kind of, kind of, kind of participants, this could get mm-hmm. quite hectic. But still, I think that for maybe having a Escalation email kind of kind of CC or well in in the two section as well maybe for the European GDPR kind of kind of piece I think that that view gets extremely extremely kind of kind of uh, useful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, troubleshooting quality assurance. Um, this is definitely where this feature um, will be used extensively for our email clients. So that ends uh, January 2024 release notes so unboxing of these features. So with that, I want to thank everyone for uh, attend or for watching our video today. Alexander, Ryan, always a pleasure. Um, 
we'll, we'll talk soon. And everyone else, uh, please like and subscribe our this video. And um, looking forward to next month. Any final words, guys? Looking forward to seeing what comes up next month. Great. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Thank